Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Welcome you, Holy Spirit. Come. Come and have your way. We welcome you to the prayer room this morning, Holy Spirit. Fill us. Encounter us. Manifest yourself. Lord, help us pray. Teach us how to pray. As we engage, as we worship, as we lift up the Holy Name. That is above every name. Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah, we, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Abide in us and we in you, Jesus, that we may bear much, much fruit, God. Much fruit, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I might enter in. Enter in. Press in with the Lord. Press in with the Lord this morning. Come into your presence. Past the gates of into your sanctuary. Jesus. To a standing face. Mm. I look upon your countenance. 
look upon the countenance, fullness of your grace. Awesome, right here, right now, right where we are at. You're awesome, Jesus. You're awesome, Jesus.
out your voice to the Lord. By your name, there's no one like you, possessor of heaven and earth, the most high God, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, author and finisher of our faith. We exalt you, Jesus. We magnify your name. Yeah, we magnify your name. We magnify your name. I exalt you. And I want to go to 1 Peter 4, 8. We're just going to share this. We're going to pray into it. <clears throat> 1 Peter 4, 8. 1 Peter 4, 8. And the scripture says, And above all things, and above all things, have fervent love, fervent love, for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sin. Love will cover a multitude of sin and through the situation and circumstance the Lord I was just really wrestling with the Lord regarding some I would just some you know offense some wrong some 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 wrong things that was done against me and I was wrestling with the Lord what do you want me to do with the situation what do you want me to do with the circumstances and a few several different scripture came to me and I was kind of praying and digesting and just meditating and just processing this with the Lord the whole time. And, you know, obviously Matthew 18 comes to me. That's kind of the quintessential foundational um, process, biblical process for us to walk through reconciliation, right? Go to come from your brother and sister who have done wrong against you, sinned against you. If, if, if they don't listen, bring two or three witnesses. If they don't, if that, that, that didn't work, bring the elders of the church, right? Bring church leadership in. And really doing that in the spirit of what Galatians 6 talk about, bearing each other's burden. Prefer one another in love, in humility, right? That's the spirit that you want to do those things from. Not to prove you're right, right? But it's bearing bearing burden it's bearing is in humility and love and if that doesn't work then there's many different places whether it's you know first um, Corinthian also second Thessalonian chapter 3 the Lord said do not fellowship the Lord literally command do not fellowship cast them out of basically your inner circle of where you fellowship consistently right basically distance yourself from them uh, and you can read it in second Thessalonians there in chapter 3 towards, towards especially towards the end but even that the scriptures say do not count them as your enemy it's interesting even say hey for this moment right now because you walk through all of the process biblically that what you should be done but however if this person the other person choose not to relent choose not to reconcile choose to stay in their sin or in their offense right do nothing with them do not fellowship with them surrender them to the lord but do not count them as your enemy the scripture says so i was wrestling through those passages myself personally and then then um then the scripture of the love cover multitude sin came through a friend of mine. And I was wrestling with that, right? I say, how, what, what is the integration of all of these come together means? 
And I just felt like to share this is this is fresh. This is I just walked through this this week. I think it's so important the re the realization when the Lord showed me about the scripture. This is a while back, and like a, almost a, two weeks ago, I think, when I was reading uh, Thessalonian as part of my devotional, that even when a, a brother is, I'm talking about a believer in Christ, even they gone wayward, they became prodigals, they walked away, they're struggling, maybe they're in sin. Those are not your enemies. Those are not your enemies. And I think it's so important to fervently pray for them. And that's why this scripture in verse 8, love cover multitude of sin. Cover them in fervent prayer, in faith, even though you may not fellowship with them, right? Even you may not uh, reconcile with them at the moment, at the moment right now. But the Lord knows. Sometimes the Lord will work things behind the scene that we have no idea and sometimes could be gone for a long time I have a friend of mine recently that was part of a ministry for for a long for a while and uh, I, we know I know this pattern of this person come and go come and go like it's you know want to get involved in different ministries and plug in here plug in there but come and go come and go and there was an the incident I won't go the, the incident doesn't matter but was some you know unfortunate things that he done against me, um, and has to do with some business dealing that that I end up did with him, right? I uh, I purchased his services that 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 was rendered. Unfortunately, it, it did not paint out the way it should. And long story short, the Lord told me, literally say, Kevin, give them to me. Do not deal with them. That's all the Lord told me. The Lord didn't tell me anything else. Because I was trying to reconcile. We try to go back and forth. You know, we try to walk out the Matthew, you know, the Matthew 18 in the spirit of Galatians 6 and other places. It didn't work. Right? At the moment it didn't work. It, it it's not the process it didn't work. Is that at the moment it did not work. Then I let it go. I told the Lord told me specifically to let him go. Then I pray for him. I don't pray for him every single time. I just I don't. I'm being just candid with you. I pray for him here and there over. This is well over a year. Definitely past a year. I don't know if it's a year and a half, but definitely past a year. And all of a sudden, I got a call from him. Out of the blue, I was surprised. <laughs> and he wanted to get a hold of me. So you know, finally we connected over the phone. And I'll say, hey, you know, what what can I do for you? And he just he started confessing. Uh, what he did wrong to say man I, I really messed up and I, I should have came to you sooner and earlier and make you know ask you for your forgiveness and reconcile and make restitution for the for the heartache for the you know actually damage because there was damage done physically that that through through the through the services that was done that was done incorrect was done wrong and um, and I had to find another contractor to, to fix what it was done. So obviously it cost me a lot more money, but yet the Lord told me to let him go during that time. And the Lord brought this brother back to reconcile a year later. So I don't know why this is put on my heart because it, it is not what I was in, intended to pray or even share, but I felt like this is for someone. Someone need to hear this. Let them go. It doesn't mean that they're never coming back. There's a difference between we 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 have a cliche. Uh, we often hear, "Let go and let God." Let go and let God. And I, I think we really need to understand what this really means about let go and let God. Is that you're not letting it go or the person go just to anything anywhere. You're surrendering them into the hands of the Father. You're surrendering them to the mighty right hand of God. There is no hand than better hand than your, when someone is in the hand of God, the hand of our Father. And when you truly do that surrender sincerely in faith, and you're fervently loving the brother, even at a distance, right? Because you do not want to tolerate sin. 
You do not want to compromise with sin. That Bible is very, very, very clear about that. But you can pray for them. You can stand with them. All of the, the above. And you, you'll be surprised because I didn't think, I, I have no expectation of this brother reaching out to me and coming back to me. Zero. Right? I, I thought that was it. The Lord's going to do what he's going to do. It took a while. This time took well over a year later. He came back and prayed and were reconciled. He even asked me, how can I make it right for the, for the not only the emotional and the, all the hard gate and effort that you had to done to reconcile all these things and process it, find another contractor, get all the other things done. How can I make it right financially? Just like Zacchaeus. You know, when, when Zacchaeus uh, invite Jesus to dinner, right? He obviously was desire and hunger and thirst for the kingdom of God because you saw that in Jesus. And Jesus said, come down today, tonight, I must dine with you. Jesus said, because Jesus realized it. He discerned it. But at dinner, you know, Zacchaeus is not just asking for forgiveness and mercy. He made restitution. He said, for anything I have basically misused, mistreated, and done wrongful practice, unjust things against, I'm going to make it right times four. I'm going to return unto them and then times four. <laughs> you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, he didn't say, son, no, you don't have to do that. My grace is sufficient for you. My grace is free. You don't have to do that. You're not earning it. The, the Lord didn't say none of that. Today, for the kingdom of God has come upon you. My God, for the for today, kingdom of God has come upon you, your household. Because he not only saw the heart of repentance in sincerity, his mercy and grace automatically extend. But he saw, say, ha, he, he saw, he didn't understand the ways of the kingdom in terms of making restitution. I know this is longer than what I would typically do on the prayer set, but I really felt like to pray into this. I really, I really feel like we need to pray into this. This is for someone. The Lord is going to move. Just trust Him. Trust in God. I, I'm trusting God for move to certain things personally in my life and my family. I am trusting God to move. And I feel like I, the Lord asked me to share this to encourage someone else today. Trust God to move. Trust God. When you truly surrender into God's hands and stay in faith, stay in love. And even if it is the certain situation where you should and need to separate yourself in terms of fellowship, a relationship with that person, you still can intercede in the realm of the spirit. There is no shadow. <clears throat> there is no shadow turning. There is no distance. There is no boundary. There is no, there is no time. Let me even say it that way. There's no time in the realm of the spirit what the Lord can do in your life. In your life. So, Father, we just pray this this morning. Help us, God. Help me. Help whoever this word is for this morning. This encouragement is for this morning. Whoever it is for. Help us, help us, help us, help us. We come boldly before the throne room of mercy and grace in the time of our need, even now this morning. Even now this morning, help us in the time of our need. In the time of our need, forgive us. Forgive us our trespasses and for those who trespasses against us. Any sin, any words, any inner vow, any agreement that we made with the enemy, any lies that we believed in that is not from you, Lord, we repent right now. Forgive us. Forgive our sin. Forgive our transgression and iniquity. And forgive those who have offended us, who have done injustice, betrayal, who has wronged us. Lord, we forgive them right now. Come on, forgive them. Say their name. Whatever Holy Spirit revealing to you, say their name out loud right now. Whoever they are, we forgive them right now. We surrender them into your hands, Father. Specifically, we ask, 
we surrender them into your hand. There's no better hand in the hands of God. We bless them. We cover them with the blood of Jesus. Encounter them with the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, give us grace. Receive grace. Break out every shame, every guilt, every reproach, every heartache, every fear. Just like Isaiah 41 says, fear not. Do not be dismayed. Fear not. My God, fear not. The Lord says, be not dismayed. Do not be discouraged. Do not look to the right or to the left. Look at me. Look at me, son. Look at me, daughter. Look at me. Focus your gaze on me and me alone. Not to the right, not to the left. Follow the straight and the narrow way of the Lord. Trust me. The Lord says, trust me. Trust me. I will see you through. Everything that the enemy has stolen shall be restored with restitution. With restitution. Not just restored, but multiplied. 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 Father, we just trust you right now. We thank you for this word. I received this word myself. I thank you for this word. I bless you, God.